Thank you. Uh, thank you so much for having us here today. And thank you for the National Alliance for Public Charter Schools uh, for hosting this conversation. Uh, it's entitled, Why Teachers Ignore Your School. Um, and we're gonna talk a, a bit about, uh, well, a lot about a couple issues. One is how to market your school to prospective candidates um, and how to make that more proactive versus reactive and also best practices in the recruitment process. So I'm Wayne Tam, co-founder CEO of Selected. And I'm joined uh, today, of course, as always, with Alex Thorson. She's our Director of Growth and Partnerships. First, I'll start with just a quick uh, brief introduction to Select. For those who are not familiar with us, we're essentially a teacher uh, and education uh, educator hiring and matching platform. We make it really easy for you to connect with qualified, diverse, and relevant candidates in your area. So it's a pre-made, ready-made pipeline of candidates for your school or your network. Um, we have many educators on our platform, uh, over 70,000 actually, um, a, a percentage of those are active job seekers. And so you only see those individuals, but a variety of roles. And finally, um, yeah, access to our platform um, really gives you uh, ability to post jobs, directly message um, and promote your school. Learning outcomes for today, uh, four big ones. First, what's missing in your outreach and recruitment process? Two, how to hold your own. Um, if you are a smaller um, school, individual school or smaller network, how to hold your own against larger districts and networks um, because of your the lack of, of fewer resources. Um, how to build a sustainable process that will outlast recruiter turnover, how to make sure that's sustainable. Um, and of course, um, the headline of all of this is how to proactively connect with teachers and have them find you rather than the other way around. Okay, so what we know and what you know, more, more specifically, why is recruitment uniquely challenging for smaller organizations? Of course, limited staffing and resources. You're lucky um, to have one dedicated recruitment professional. I'm guessing many of those on this call may be the person dedicated. Um, and because of this uh, lack of time, resources, while recruitment is always top of mind, it's necessar not necessarily what you're working on. Um, and it often leaves schools reactive rather than proactive and passive rather than proactive. It's hard to be found by teachers. That's another headline here. It's just hard. There's a lot of competing audiences, other larger districts, networks, private schools, other non-education employment opportunities, right? And not to mention that if you're an individual school or smaller network, yeah, if, you, if someone types in your school in Google, will they find you? How do they find you? Do they find you through job posts? Maybe, but you see the candidates are coming in through your job posts. A lot Many of them are actually teachers and you may not even, not sure if they're actually even real people. Job fairs are synchronous. It's hard to, you know, it, it's, it's a time consuming process and it might not be candidates exactly the right fit for you. So it's hard, it's hard to be um, discovered um, and, uh, and thus it's hard to maintain organic pipelines. Um, organic meaning, organic by meaning that candidates are coming to you rather than you paying or, or you know, investing uh, resources to, to attract them. Um, it's just hard to do that time consuming um, for that, as well as building partnerships with uh, entities like schools of education and other nonprofit partners. Finally, if it feels like you see the same challenges every year, yeah, you probably are because um, what we've seen, and we've been doing this um, since 2016, um, we see a lot of turnover of the, among the recruitment ranks. Of course, there's significant turnover among the um, even administrators as well. There's just, and I hear this a lot. We hear this a lot from other recruiters. If you feel like you're recreating wheel every time. So how do you make sure that those incremental improvements or those lessons learned every year stay with you um, uh, rather than having to do it again every year? This is a quote we received from a, a charter school on selected uh, one base in Texas that charter schools are often not um, part of um, uh, SOE discussions and often conflated with being more similar to private schools, lower paying, stealing for public achievement. We've all heard this about charter schools. Um, and there are many misconceptions about charter schools. It's hard to, you know, it's hard to fight that. But the bigger hurdle in this process is really getting through that noise and finding those teachers that you really want, right? And those are the best fit for you. And how do you do that? And we'll talk about how to do that today. You know what those teachers are, you know who your ideal candidates are, but you need to make sure, and we'll talk about this, what is that? Identify it, personify it, uh, and build uh, resources and marketing materials around that so you can focus all your resources on those candidates that make the best fit for you. So you need to attract them, both in terms of the content and messaging that you have. Um, these are things that you need to figure out, your school culture, what makes you special, what is your compelling offer, an opportunity for your candidate. 
what are those non-monetary benefits, right? This is just part and part. These are probably common things that you hear, but they're also best practices in making sure that, uh, and, and making sure you're articulating what is unique about your school. The other side note of this is that as much as you can control this message and, the, and that you can deliver this directly to candidates, the better, uh, because they're hearing it from you and it's much more personalized. Um, so, of course, describing what you can offer them and then delivering on the promises, um, which is often a, a, another difficult part of it. Um, and these promises aren't just, you know, once they reach campus or once you reach your school and start their job, it's also ahead of that. What are those things a part of your recruitment process um, that you can control that give them uh, the, the um, uh, that they give them the understanding that you are very focused on a teacher, that you support them, that you're supportive and have a customer service mentality through the whole recruitment process, right? You're always there, you're responsive. Um, all those are cues and clues into how they will be treated when they are employed. Um, and how consistent is the message among uh, the job post, the, the job opportunity, the school culture articulate, and of course, all those touch points that this candidate will have both with recruitment and in the interview process. So these are all parts of the process. We won't cover all of them today, but just to give you a sense of what you need to do to not just attract, uh, to, to attract them, right? And keep them interested in the role that you present them. But before all this, you actually have to find the candidate. So we're gonna talk about top of the funnel, how do you find them? And then we'll talk about how you engage them, push them through your recruitment process. Okay, so the first step is uh, in building the recruitment process uh, is to get candidates, uh, is, to, is to really define, is to really improve the marketing of um, your school website. So this is, uh, this is something that, this is new. So we're, we're demoing this today in terms of, in terms of our, our presentation. But one thing that we've noticed over the past six years is school websites don't have, often don't have kind of clear articulation of what we think are just really pertinent um, pertinent points of information, particularly for candidates who may have just clicked on a link, who may just be, oh, I heard about this school, let me check out the website, maybe click on social media. Just in this day and age where people short, the attention spans are incredibly short, how do you get them to understand your school and mission and vision in very discreet, uh, uh, in discreet bullets or points um, and get them just bought in quickly so they can move to the next step. The whole point isn't to sell your school all at once, it's just to make sure that there's ways to kind of push them along. So four things that all school websites should have, but often do not. Um, and they do, but uh, it's not quickly kind of discernible. One, clear, easily discoverable vision and mission. This is clear. Um, that's, that's, um, that's a necessity. Two, um, easy to find information on a couple, key, um, uh, couple key data points. One, location. Shocking. I mean, this may be, so you may be looking at this like, of course, of course we have this on our homepage. You're insane. Really, we we go to web, we go to websites often. And I'm struggling to find the school, the grades they serve, the types of the, the demographics and the student served. Are they a private school? Are they a charter school? Are they are they a district school? Um, and the grades served. And these are core characteristics for any teacher. Is this is this school matching to me at a very high level? That's even before, honestly, they even look at vision and mission. They even serve the grades that I care about. Three um, images that show the school's culture and vision in action. How can Pictures are, are incredibly valuable. Videos are really valuable. Testimonies are valuable. How can you articulate this in quick sound bites? And then four, and we left it at four, but it's it's uh, it's a uh, it, it, there's really no particular order here. They're all important. Is that how does a candidate come to your site and know that you're hiring and what for? We know websites have multiple purposes. That's why it's difficult because I know you're trying to, you know, enrollment's a big issue. Maybe you're seeking additional donations or some kind of marketing effort on another front. But then you also have, if we're talking about, and this is really from a recruitment lens, um, if you're here to recruit teachers or other candidates for your school, how do they get to that point? Okay. And by the way, all of the above is helpful for really all audiences, parents, etc., cetera, um, any stakeholders. Okay, so what we're going to do now, if everyone's near, if you have a phone or a computer, um, we're going to we're going to look at two websites, two school websites, and this is kind of direct feedback into at least our initial action into um, and these are two schools that recently signed up, selected, so they're just on our minds. Um, so the idea is the exercise is put your put yourself in the shoes of a candidate of someone looking for a job. We're going to spend a minute, um, sixty seconds to to go to Detroit Prep. 
um, DetroitPrep.org. So if everyone can just quickly type that into a browser, open another window, um, don't close it on this presentation, um, and find out how to apply to a job. So we're gonna wait here, 60 seconds, um, DetroitPrep.org. Um, the link is in chat as well. Um, actually, uh, Detroit, uh, if you, I think it's uh, misspelled a D, a T R O I T prep, um, and we'll come back in probably four to five seconds now. There you go. Thank you. Okay, 10 seconds. Let's have folks uh, found how to apply to a job. If not, that's okay. If you have, fantastic. We're just gonna walk through the website right now. And, we, and I highly encourage this um, for folks who, with their own website uh, to do this, maybe have just to watch somebody. Uh, maybe it's uh, a current teacher, just to watch how they navigate your site. How do you find a job? How do you apply? What does that experience look like? Um, because I think it'd be really instructive and also what they're thinking in their head, have them talk through it. So this is um, Detroit Prep's website. This is the homepage. And what I like about, and we'll talk about kind of likes and, and ways to improve. What I love about this site is that it's very clear, straight up front, right? Detroit Prep Free Public Charter School, great. Charter School, awesome. Detroit, of course, it's in the name, but oftentimes it may not be. Um, and they serve K through six. So as a teacher, I know immediately, boom, Free Public Charter School, I know my demographic, I know where, I know what grade levels. Okay, and I see right, and this is all above the fold. So this above the fold meaning this is the first screen you see on your website. Awesome, you you see the you see the message, world class equitable education. I already get a sense of what they care about. Um, fantastic picture. Now, cool. Like, is this is this? You can keep scrolling down. You see some more photos. Keep scrolling down even further, and then you hit the bottom. Want to learn about us? Okay. Now. Now, if you go back to the, and, and if you're a candidate and you go back to the top, because often you're kind of flipping back and forth, like right here, what do I do? How do I apply? I see about, um, I don't see really see anything else. Um, and so if I click about, and you can scroll all the way down, Alex. I click about, I get more uh, about, I scroll down on about, um, I see, this is awesome, four key points of mission. I'm really excited now. I scroll down, I see their school directory, fantastic. Now this about section is about 16 pages down because they list everybody, which is fine. And you come to the bottom and right at the bottom, right at the bottom, I see careers, right? So this is, and I don't know how many, I'm curious if, if folks um, were able to uh, find this in 60 seconds, um, but if you're quickly, if you're quickly kind of going through it, it might be hard. So let's keep let's keep going. What they're doing well, we mentioned a bunch of these things, clear articulation of school type, location, mission, compelling content, very aesthetically pleasing. It is easy to navigate. But if you're a candidate, were you able to find the careers link in that footer? So let's go to another school. Um, this school is called Delaware. Um, I believe it's a, uh, it's a gateway school in Delaware. So let's do another 60 seconds here that the, um, to go to gateway charter school, de.org. So gateway charter school, de.org. And so you want to think about those same questions, right? Um, school type, grades they serve, mission and vision. If you're a candidate and this is a brand new school or just an outsider, um, is this an interesting organization? Is this aligned with what I believe? Does this serve the grades that I want to work with or the students that I want to work with? And then finally, if it meets all those criteria, how do I apply? And what in this search process makes you, you know, detracts from that process. All right, that's a minute. That's fast. Okay, so 
this is the homepage. Uh, you see at the top about us, admissions. Um, this is kind of their headline, school board, get involved, contact us. There's a couple of court, big CT calls to action, the March PTA, the goals, um, the ESSER plan, uh, what they're planning to do with the money. We keep scrolling down. You see some quick links, event calendar, fine, mission. I believe the mission and vision are next. Great, nice. Um, some nice pictures, nice strong colors. The Gateway Charter School, we see the location. Cool. Now, most people like me, I click into about because I often look for, I just, that's my like logical place to go um, if I want to learn more. I see our mission, core beliefs, staff by dire directory is at, as kind of an initial drop down. There's nothing here about jobs. I do get something, I do get more text. Uh, it's a bit, bit text heavy, but on mission philosophy, that's good. Um, but, you know, could be simplified, I think. Um, and if you scroll down a bit more, you'll see a little bit more about finally, you know, not on the, it's not on the homepage, but in this program description, I see the grades I serve. But again, this is what a candidate would have to look for to, to understand if this is great fit for me. They talk about, it talks about additional kind of curriculum and philosophy. It's nice and what the parents say, right? It's a bit text heavy, but it's there, which is, um, uh, which is better than, than many. And, but there's no jobs here. And so where are the jobs? It's actually in get involved. I don't know how many folks clicked on get involved, um, but it's there. It's actually the third one down. It's below donate, volunteer, and employment. Employment's there. And employment's, a, you know, the term itself is a little, I don't know, could, could more of like we're hiring or, you know, join us or, or work with us or, or something. I'm a little more um, kind of a, a call to action versus, uh, you know, you want a verb almost, but that's how you get there. I don't know how many people made it there, but again, do this exercise with your website, other websites. This is the type of thing that um, will help improve just engagement, conversion um, at a very high level. Okay, so we talked about, about a bunch of this stuff, a um, lot of positives. Um, what could be improved is uh, making clearer call to action on, on getting hired, on, on jobs available. Um, jobs, there's nothing about them, open opportunities under about us, which is typical. Um, quick links um, on the homepage did not include anything about jobs. So again, this is just, we're not trying to be, uh, we're trying to be as helpful as possible in, in articulating what could be improved, um, but this is not atypical. Actually, these two sites are better than average, I would say. Okay, so let the next section that we're gonna talk about is what's missing in your current um, in your current recruitment process, what could be missing that could be improved and allow you to um, more easily proactively connect with um, candidates and build an organic pipeline. So first, we'll start with a reflection on your current process. So um, to ask yourself uh, a couple questions: One, are there you know how many dead how many how many resources do you have right? How many resources do you have? How can you build an organic pipeline um, to your school? And, and what does this type of, what type, because you have the resource view, what is this, uh, what type of recruitment does this foster? A reactive process, a proactive process. Most schools um, have a passive process because that's all the time that you have. Um, and if you were able to um, uh, simplify the efforts, right, what would you need uh, to, 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 to make this more proactive, right? I believe one thing, is making sure is also understanding kind of the split between um, sourcing and selection, right? The time that you spend sourcing, the time you spend sele uh, selecting. A lot of time that is spent, um, a lot of time that is spent is really building the pool, the building your pipeline up front um, um, versus selection. How could you simplify that? So Alex, you can switch to the next one. Right, and so on. You know what would on selected? There's a, there's many ways that candidates uh, come to our site, um, and they can quickly identify the preferences in the schools that they're interested in. So off the bat, the candidates that you see are already kind of pre vetted, um, have characteristics that match with your school, and they also are, qual are qualified and diverse. And so all of these things are incorporated in your candidate pool up front, so you can reach out to them directly. 
and they meet many of the characteristics that you are looking for. So you don't have to spend that time building your pipeline. If you have limited resources, you should be spending your time reaching out to people, building relationships and engaging them. And so however you decide to build this pipeline, right? There's many things you can do. You can create content, you can create webinars. There are many ways to build traffic. It's time consuming, but you can do it. And we highly recommend that you do. But once you have that pipeline, great. Then you can reach out to folks. This is but one other option for you to um, begin um, your proactive recruitment process. Um, and also on this, on this particular um, canticle, you can of course filter down for a bunch of different um, characteristics, including subject, grade level, years experience, everything that you're looking for is already built in to um, the search experience. Okay, so and the next part about the current process to reflect on is really how do you communicate? How do you identify your ideal candidates? How do they find your ideal? How do they find your positions? How do they discover your school? And so what you should think about is how much time are you dedicating sources, sourcing? When does it happen? Um, does it happen throughout the year? Does it happen just kind of during hiring season? Um, one thing that we recommend is you employing kind of a year round cycle if you can, because as we know, it's often too late when you already have you know, positions open. Um, uh, you want to make sure that cans are engaged the whole time, keeping them warm, which we'll talk about how to do that. But really um, building that kind of long-term pipeline and then um, helping candidates find your open positions. And how can you, how, how can you do that? Is, as we talked about in your website, articulating very clearly just key characteristics of what is your ideal candidate to um, your benefits as a school and just high level details that they don't have to search for, your school type, um, the students you serve, on the mission vision of your organization. Year-round school profiles at any time. Um, these are profiles that are up um, so, so schools, so candidates can find you. And these are, and for you to find them. So when you find candidates that you're interested in, you can reach out to candidates directly based on a variety of attributes that are already uh, match with uh, pro, uh, open positions that you are, that you need. Okay. Now the last reflection that I want folks to think through is your pipeline. So how do you build, how do you maintain that pipeline? We talked about, um, partnerships that you might have, uh, they're hard to maintain, right? With schools of education, we know that you want to reach out to schools of education, um, to have organic, uh, inbound. Um, other places like Teach for America, alums, things like that. How do you maintain those? Those are time consuming. We know we've tried to we build kind of uh, partnerships on our own, and that's something that you can leverage um, uh, through us as well, including the schools of education that we work with um, and that we market to. Um, uh, we market um, uh, your open positions to as well. Okay. All right. So Wayne, thank you for walking us through all of those websites. We're going to talk now. We've seen some examples. We know what feels good, what maybe could be improved on those websites. And now we're going to take a look at how we learn to hold our own and keep our candidates interested. Before I jump in here, I know Stacy, you asked a little bit earlier if we could talk about some of this noise around teacher shortages. And there's definitely a teacher shortage. I think we all feel that it's growing. I know the pandemic has had a big impact on this as well. But besides the fact that, you know, we maybe have teachers who are leaving the profession, there are also less teachers who are just willing to change locations just because, right? So we had a slide earlier on that talked about those teachers all of us want in our schools they are dedicated to their schools and their students. They're working hard. They're working overtime every single day to make sure there's a good experience for their students and their student families, especially in these last two years. And so they're not likely to leave a school to go to another classroom that is exactly like the one that they're in. 
And they really want to know that they're making an impact, that they can make a difference, that they are valued. That's one of the biggest pain points for teachers is just not feeling valued once hired, um, not feeling like their expertise is being honored or even used uh, to their best ability. And so those are things to think about. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that. So if, Stacey, I don't get this question fully answered in this part or for anyone else, let us know in the chat or the Q&A and, and we'll try to get to more of that. So one thing that you definitely are going to want to do here is recognize your advantages. As a single site school, and I know we have about 39% of you on this call are a single site school, the rest of you as a network, whether you get to have a lot of autonomy as a school or you are a smaller network, chances are you are going to have some clear advantages over really large networks and really large districts, just because you can move a little bit faster. Oftentimes this means that we have a really strong school culture for better or worse. So even if you have a st strong school culture, think about the impact that culture is having on your stakeholders, your students, families, your teachers. Articulate and demonstrate your school culture broadly and consistently what you say to your teachers as you are recruiting them, right? Come work at our school because we are X, Y, and Z should be the same things you would say to families when enrolling students. You would say about students in an assembly. You don't wanna disconnect there because that disconnect is going to cause, well, quite honestly, it's gonna cause retention issues, right? There's gonna be some resentment in there if either party finds out you're talking negatively, you're more deficit-based when you're in front of one audience, more asset-based in front of another. Stay asset-based, stay consistent in your messaging. Um, again, here, candidates are not gonna leave their current roles for something that feels like the position they are already in. They want something different. They want to know by moving to another school and taking on a new role, this is a career advancement. This is an opportunity to be challenged, to learn something new for whatever reason, maybe it's because they wanna stay classroom teachers and they just want to really experience more practices to find out what's truly a best practice. Maybe they wanna be a school leader and they wanna get more examples of what strong teaching can look like and diversify their idea of strong teaching. Candidates want to be where they feel valued and important. And this is often a very overlooked benefit and it is one that moves candidates. If you are talking to a candidate and you can share with them and again, honor that once they are hired and working with you, how they are going to be able to bring what they have to offer to the school, how valued that is, how you plan to use that and help other teachers engage in those same best practices, this moves teachers. Flexibility is also another key advantage. Don't wait until hiring season. Whatever you think hiring season is, Try and get that out of your head and remember this is year round. You recruit year round because large districts and larger networks are often tied to hiring during a specific window. You are not. Most candidates, more than 50% of them are taking their first offer. And recruitment, think of this in the same as this idea of like you don't stop dating your spouse. You don't stop recruiting your newest hires. If you come on heavy at the beginning about how great they are and six months goes by before their day one on campus, you're going to lose them. Something, even if they are physically in the building, you've turned them off in some way, shape, or form. They are not going to have the same relationship and partnership moving forward that they would have had you kept that consistent as well. So build that into your process. If you ignore them or ghost on them, chances are they will do the same to you. So you gotta be the one to break that cycle. As you articulate your school brand and really figure out how to like market your school, you wanna understand your core values and your school culture. How do you operate and act, those foundational beliefs and values, your instructional model, right? What are you prioritizing when it comes to instruction? What does this look like? What does lesson planning look like? Um, are teachers following a scripted curriculum? Are they building their own? Those are all things to be thinking about, including your behavioral management practices, school-wide, classroom-based. Determine the characteristics of candidates most aligned with those core values. 
create a persona for them. Think about who is this person? Where would this person be hanging out? What does their work day look like? Once you know that, if you know, oh, my ideal candidate is working overtime hours and they're constantly busy, then that traditional way of sourcing and recruiting them and selecting them, the whole hiring process might not work for them, right? So think, how do I adjust what I am doing to get the type of candidate I am most interested in attracting? Create compelling job descriptions. So many job descriptions look the same. Find a way to stand out from your competition. Remember that teachers, especially if we're feeling that teacher shortage right now, they're in high demand and their time is more limited than ever. You don't want them to read your job description and have to think about whether this fits their goals and aspirations. Make it so clear what you are looking for and the type of candidate you are looking for that as your right fit candidate is reading this, it's just jumping off the page at them that this is them. This is the school they are meant to be at and they want to work with people like the people being hired at this school. Okay, get that as clear for them as you can. Um, get also really clear on those roles, responsibilities, and the expectations as a teacher at this school. Otherwise, you're wasting their time, they're wasting your time, and all in all, in the entire cycle of recruitment, we're hurting each other if we aren't following those best practices, because the more recruiters a candidate talks to and has a bad experience with, the less recruiters they will talk to in the future. So recruiter to recruiter, these are things that we really want to be working on. Think about opening up with a paragraph about your school that gets teachers excited about joining your team. Again, we're gonna say this, we've said it before, we're probably gonna say it a few more times in this presentation. Highlight your school culture, your students, your values, your current team, bring your school to life on your website and any of the resources that you're sharing with your candidates during this process. Also talk about where you are headed and how this particular role is going to help get you there, right? Because now as a teacher who wants to have an impact and make a difference in my role, you're telling me exactly how you see me helping you get where you're going and helping our students get where we're going, right? What is that vision? All right, we're marketing our brand. I'm going to go through this one pretty quick here, but find ways to differentiate, differentiate yourself in commonly used channels. Just like with those job posts we were talking about, stand out. Don't feel like one in every other school, right? Be different um, and figure out what makes your school different. Magnets are these irresistible offers that we can give our candidates. You see this in marketing in different industries. A lot of schools have not yet tapped into this. And this is an area that can attract those candidates year round. If you have a behavior management system, maybe you have a tracker that you're using in classrooms. Maybe there is a lesson plan template that you have found that is more effective than any other lesson planning template you've seen. Anything that candidates can download, leave an email address with you and download and use even in their current school, you are advertising yourself as a school that's a right fit for them because you do what they want to be doing. They want to lesson plan the way you're lesson planning. They want to track behavior the way you are tracking behavior. So even if it's October, you've now got that email address when you are ready to hire, follow up with those people. Let them know that you have a position that might be the right fit for them. They're already going to have your school top of mind. Then market those throughout different touch points with candidates as well. If they haven't seen them yet, let them know, right? Whether this is a candidate you are wanting to interview or a candidate that is just in that pipeline somewhere, maybe you didn't have an open role for them this year, but you might next year, keep them warm, keep these resources and development opportunities fresh for folks. All right, then when it comes to competing with these larger districts and networks, treat candidates like their customers, right? Your first, the candidate's first impression of your school is so critical. Keep your website, job postings, any platform profiles updated and accurate. You do not want to go to a website and have the information that's there five years old. Sometimes it's even more than five years old. Sometimes the website itself feels just outdated in terms of how it even looks. So keep things updated. Again, that first impression is critical. You want them to feel excited about coming to your school and you want them to feel that you are just excited about getting 
to know them as they are about getting to know more about that open role. That is going to move folks. That is going to keep them from ignoring your outreach. Be respectful of their time. Again, these are very busy people. Make them feel welcome and comfortable. Think about what that looks like if you're inviting them into your school in pandemic times or non-pandemic times. And it might look a little different. What does comfortability look like for folks during this time um, when the stage that our world is in? And then same thing virtually. This can feel a lot less impersonal for folks. And even though we've gotten used to it, it's still very different than being in person. So how do I make you feel comfortable in a virtual setting? And stay in touch, be timely. Again, don't make them think you're ignoring them or ghosting on them or that you found a more attractive candidate to move forward with and you're just kind of keeping them there in case, bench warming, as they say. Be timely in your messages. Let them know they can reach out with questions and concerns throughout the hiring process and beyond. Find them where they are. They're using social media. That is a place that they go to relax, to just kind of take a break, get those few moments. Some of them maybe more than a few moments, but few moments away from the everyday chaos. Social media also encourages two-way conversation, makes it easy for your network to share what's going on at your school, right? This is another great place. Get that school culture out there. Show them what that looks like in action. You aren't just talking the talk about your mission and vision. You can show people what this looks like at your school. Not only is this great for finding candidates, but remember, people talk to people like them. So even if I, as a candidate, am not looking for a new school right now, five of my friends might be. So if I know this is a great school and I can see my friends there, I'm going to tell them about it. So know that this becomes a referral program in and of itself. Share those photos and videos of your school community. As I said, this really just brings your school to life. Last piece on this section, you want to craft response-worthy emails. Emails, they get ignored. There are too many of them. In the last two years, because so much of our life, work, and personal has gone virtual, there was a time, you know, pre-2020, when it was kind of nice to sneak off into your office and take 30 minutes to look through emails. That's not what people want to do anymore. This is not, doesn't necessarily even for most people feel like a way to attack a to-do list or feel like they've achieved something. So emails have to stand out or they will get ignored at this point. Have a compelling subject line, okay? New job opportunity is too boring. They're getting too many of those. Don't do that. Think of something that's going to actually get them to open that message. It may just be having to be more um, detailed, right? It's not just a new job opportunity. It's a third grade ELA position at a charter network or charter school in the Bronx, right? Get really specific about what's happening. Read your candidate profiles thoroughly. Mention something about them in your message. Get personal in there, right? Have some sort of personalization. Don't make this feel like a copy and paste. Even if the copy and paste is easier for you, it's more likely to get ignored by a candidate. Be different than your competitors. As always, same thing in any of the marketing that you're doing. Send it from a real person. Otherwise, you're going to get stuck in that spam box and you do not want that. So make sure it's coming from person's name at, not info at, not HR at, recruiter at. Those are too likely to hit spam filters. And then build content around a specific call to action. You don't want to have a bunch of CTAs in your email. Get one in there. Have it clear. Have the relevant details that as a candidate, I'm reading that. I know exactly what you want me to do and what you need me to do to move forward in this process, wherever we may be in the process. All right, let me just quickly check these questions here. Perfect, okay. All right, so how do we now proactively connect with teachers and get them to respond? We showed you what you gotta do in those email addresses or email messages. Um, here's how you best leverage this idea of proactive outreach. You've got that customer service mindset. You wanna be the first, okay? Most schools are passive. Most schools are passive because they are so busy. You want to be willing to jump on the phone if that candidate is truly a top pick for you. 
make sure you are doing whatever it's going to take to get in front of them. And you have to figure out if this is a priority for you. I know there are so many priorities for so many of you that are wearing multiple hats, but how do you do this to get out of that place of being a passive recruiter? Direct messages to candidates, have that with your mission, have the opportunity stated in there, control the message that is going out, keep it personal, make them feel important to you, make them feel special to you. In so many ways, this really is like an online dating scenario, right? How do you stand out from everyone else that is going after these candidates? Teaching candidates are not used to feeling special or in demand. Um, so when you can make them feel that way, this is going to be one of the fastest ways to make sure your message is not ignored. Make them feel important. Be willing to take time throughout the year to keep those strong candidates engaged. Keep them reminded about your school, what they would be getting if they were a part of your school, what they would be offering your school if they were a member of your team. Again, people network with like-minded people, so you never know who I'm going to be sharing this information with and what other candidates are going to be sharing. Um, same thing goes for the negative, right? If this is a bad experience, I may tell people you don't want to interview with that school, so really get things cleaned up there as well. And then providing development opportunities to those highly desired candidates or candidates who are so close to being the right fit but weren't quite there yet, get them those development opportunities and follow up with them six months later, a year later, people change. Remember, sometimes your most dedicated staff members, they're already in-house. So if you're gonna spend money sourcing for recruiting, working with other teachers, what can you also do if you were to repurpose some of those funds potentially? to look at your teaching assistants, your teaching aides, your paraprofessionals, et cetera. They're already bought into your school culture. They are already a part of your school community. They love your students. Are they potential classroom leaders? Here's what outreach and engagement ends up looking like on Selected. You can message and track those interview ready aligned candidates directly on our platform. Makes it really, really easy to keep track of all those messages. If you want to take it, offline or do your own email call folks you can also do that once you have access to their full resumes but keeping it on platform does streamline messaging and it allows us to step in um, and help out where necessary as well targeted job posts you can broadcast these um, out to your matching candidates weekly we're going to do the broadcasting for you but if you keep those job posts updated the most updated information is going to get in front of the candidates that are already pre-vetted and matching for your preferences, right? They wanna be in your location in a school like yours at the grade levels you're looking for, subject areas you're looking for. So that's really helpful. And then these public school profiles increase school discoverability. It is a place that not only candidates are able to see you, but schools of education are able to see your school information as well and share that out with their students and alumni. Incomplete profiles, whether this is on our platform or any other platform you are using, is one of the biggest reasons schools are getting ignored. We've got this example up here from College Achieve Public Schools is the one we showed earlier. It's very complete. There's a lot of information. In fact, they have 25 open roles. So if I'm a teacher who stumbles upon this profile, I can scan right through and see how many of these roles feel like they might be something I want to do. I can learn more about them. I see information on their students, on their faculty, the overview, their headline is definitely complete. And then American School Foundation has a far less, at the time that this screenshot was taken, less profile information. And so if both of these schools reach out to me and as a busy candidate, I only have time to respond to one, I'm more likely to respond to college achieve public schools because not only are they giving me the information I'm seeking now, I'm going to make the assumption, and that is what humans do, we make assumptions, that they're going to be able to give me more information when I have questions or reach out to them as well. May not be a fair assumption, but it is the one that candidates are going to make, so think about that. That is everything that we have for you, but we are going to be taking those questions now, so if you have any we're going to be looking in the chat here and the Q&A section, so make sure you leave them there. If another question comes up, you can get a hold of us. 
on social media, or you can email either Wayne or I directly at our email addresses listed here too. And then Wayne, if you had any other last few things or if you've seen questions come in as I was on there, feel free to take over again. You will get a copy of this presentation. Yes, that will be sent out. You know, there's a question from Rod, I think, around searching. Um, I wasn't sure, I was trying to respond to the question, I wasn't sure how to, but if you can ask, add clarification of what you're looking for, you, you ask if I search for Home Depot, you know, online, I'll eventually get information from Home Depot and how can we have something like this? I'm not sure if you're asking from a can perspective um, or a school perspective or what you're trying to accomplish, I guess. Um, but if you get to add clarity to that question, that'd be great. So, Wayne, I think he's talking in terms of when you search for something, then you all of a sudden get pop-up ads mm -hmm. and things um, surrounding that. So basically how to integrate something like search engine optimization within. Yeah, I guess. Um, well, that's not, not necessarily something that we as selected can do. I mean, that's really, um, I guess, maybe, maybe another way to approach it is, um, there are ways that schools can advertise. I mean, that's the answer you're looking for, that schools can advertise um, online. Um, so if someone is looking for charter schools in New Jersey, um, you can get, you know, you might get targeted ads related to that, but that's not something we necessarily specialize in. That's really the, the, in the avenue of online ads, you know, maybe on, um, on Google or any social media site that, um, that essentially what you do is, uh, create an ad um, associated with some keywords that um, candidates may be using to find schools. Um, that's how those sites link up, you know, search results with um, with potential advertisements. If that helps, but it's really through kind of um, kind of online advertising, social media sites that you would be able to do that. And, and this that, doesn't, yeah, this doesn't fully solve it. But one thing that we do with selected is if you go in and you you know fill out all of your preferences on your profile and we then know the type of candidates that are best matches for you every monday you're going to get an email listing out new candidates in that last week that have joined the platform that match what you are looking for in a candidate so it's not the exact same thing but it is something that once you have it set letting us know this is what you're looking for you will get some ongoing information of like-minded candidates at least so yeah no that's a good point uh, alex um what i no that's a good point i mean if, if that what you're trying to do is really it sounds like now i'm thinking kind of bigger picture is if what you're trying to do is build a pipeline of relevant candidates if they're looking for schools like yours that's actually what we do do which is we already have a pool of candidates who are warm to your school your location or grade level so they're already sitting there our community of 70,000 teachers um, has likely a good number of teachers already looking for your school they just don't know necessarily your school exists and what they stand for so then it comes um, your obligation or, or working with the tools on our platform to reach out to them directly which would shortcut all of this would shortcut creating an ad posting a job, posting an ad, you just go straight to the messaging. Uh, let's see, sorry, I'm reading the question. For the one person shop, is there an ideal amount of time we should dedicate to things like website recruitment, real life? Man, that's a good question. Um, I don't, you know, of course, every case is specific uh, around how much time you should dedicate uh, to the website and kind of branding. Um, I think what I would say is you should just add a min, there's certain minimum, you know, that you should do on your website in terms of what Alex was saying, making sure your, your mission, um, vision are consistent. Um, you have your job sites up, they're updated. Um, the things that we talked about at the beginning of the session around uh, the grades you serve, the location just quick hits and can someone get to the jobs? That's kind of minimum. And at, at a quick glance, understand what your school Again, look at it from a perspective and, and the best way to do this is just get some people who are 
peripherally related to you um, and see if they can, you know, and ask them. So what do we do? Where are we located? What grades are we a good fit for you? And why or why not? That'll quickly get to a couple of pain points as to what you want to communicate. So I'd start there. Um, and now I always feel free to jump in. And there's a, the a bar was asking a question if we aren't hiring at the moment, do we have a folder with inside that keeps their information? Yes. So all the candidates on selected, um, uh, as long as they're still kind of in the job market, um, you will you can see their information. You can bookmark and save relevant candidates um, so that you know you don't have to search for them again. Uh, our site is very focused on active candidates. So if they become inactive, you may not see them. But for those who are active, um, you can keep you can you know, bookmark them and save them for later. Yeah, and if you have reached out to them, you will have access to their resume. So you can always keep that, file that away. However, yeah. you might file a resume you get at a job fair, print it off, have it somewhere. Um, so that's an option too. And then uh, the other thing I would say to this question on like the ideal amount of time to dedicate. An another thing to think about is a lot of times schools start thinking about their hiring process, their recruitment process, as that peak season is hitting, if you have downtime anywhere else in the year to think about a process that will be more sustainable, more self-selection even for candidates, right? Like I'm gonna look at my website and figure out how candidates just come here, they see exactly what they're looking for and I now have to spend less time recruiting and sourcing folks, um, take that time because it's going to pay off in the end, it's gonna, feel like a lot initially when you're doing it, but think about the things that are going to save you time long-term and that are gonna outlast, again, those turnover issues that we end up having, right? Whether that's the recruiter that you're working with, maybe you have a third party that you're working with, or maybe it's just the teachers that you're using as part of your hiring committee. So that would be something to think about too. Um, and I hate that it might be a painful process initially, but just remember it will save time in the long run. All right, well, with that, um, I wanna say thank you so much to our wonderful speakers, Wayne and Alex, you guys have, pre have provided some really great and actionable um, information and items. So thank you so much for sharing your expertise. We really appreciate you taking the time to, um, to talk with our audience here. Um, and to our audience, thank you guys so much for joining us today. Um, we encourage you to stay in touch with us um, and consider joining our charter school operations listserv. Um, the information has been put in the chat and will be included in a follow-up email to all of you, including the slide deck um, from Alex and Wayne, as well as uh, some of the information on how to stay connected with them. Um, we'll share the recording um, and we have other resources that will be available um, on our website, www.publiccharters.org slash webinars. So thank you all again for joining us this afternoon, and we hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Thanks, thank everyone. You.